something that really motivated me all throughout was that like right from day one I had a team around me who were working on the project and so even when I was in my head about something I'd, I'd get an email or a phone call from someone in my team saying hey Maria look what I've done and I'm like oh wow there's people that are working on this as well I better do my stuff and then you know it's really motivating I yeah. think to have a team um, and and then once I'd grown it to 13 chapters around the world and and I was like wow this is really overwhelming <laughs> You know, I thought about, oh, you know, should I just give this all up? But then I thought, no, I can't do that because there's 13 chapters. There's, there's like 80 people around the world that are working at least 10 hours a week on this project. And I need to, I need to step up and do my role so that they actually feel like they're getting value from what they're doing and, and um, they feel motivated. And, um, and, I, and I just believed, you know, if I just stick at this and, and, and make it work, make it, make it um, you know, really flesh it out, then it can be sustainable, and and yeah, that that was, you know, it's 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 a tough emotional journey being an entrepreneur. Yeah. I think the I think the picture that most aptly like describes it is um is like a person just huddled in the corner, like rocking. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I doing? <laughs> I was a full time student for for like the whole of Robogals actually, um, a full time engineering computer science student. And, and I thought to myself, you know, in 10 years' time, the skills that I'm learning from RoboGals will be like, worth so much more to me than, than my uni degree. I'm going all in. Mm -hmm. And I just dove into it. Um, and, and my parents were like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I have those thoughts, but it's not like I talk about them all the time. Yeah. It's, it's just like, yeah, they're there. And you're like, OK. <laughs> But I think um, knowing that the team helped me, knowing that having a team structure around me like, was a good emotional support for me meant that for the current startup that I'm doing, I was like, okay, right, first thing I need is I need people to work with. I need a team around me because I know they motivate me. There were some really tough situations when I was, when I was doing RoboGals, like so many times where projects are just not gonna happen. For example, like three three weeks out of a, a an event happening, or four weeks out of an event happening, or whatever, I'll be like, okay, this is you know this is just not going to happen. Then I'll be like, hey, Marita, you're just going to go you're just going to go into it. You just got to do it like to the best of your ability up until the event because you're going to like if you can get through this, if you can get to the other side of this, you're going to be so much stronger, so much better than you ever knew yourself to be. And I don't know what that's, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I just know that you're going to be better. And so I'll just dive in and do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. And you know, at the end of it, after I'd done it, I'll be like, wow, I'm so, I'm, you know, I was proud of myself that I did my best. And um, I was like, you know, this is what I learned. You know, and, and then I took those skills with me to the next stage. Um, so I think, yeah, for me, like, the thing that I really loved about Ruby Girls was that I was always just challenging myself to learn more and more and more. And I was challenging everyone in my team to learn more and more. And I, I didn't want, I didn't want people in my team that, that weren't being challenged and that um, you know didn't love their role. So, so hard work's a pretty key ingredient to all this. Yeah, exactly. Just it, it, it is. I think it's um, all just about well, what do I want to achieve? What do I need? Like the simplest ingredients that I need in order to get there. Um, and then, okay, how do I get the, how do I get those simple ingredients? You know, like hi buying all those robots that could have cost a lot of money. Hiring a room to do stuff in that could have cost a lot of money. But you know, if I just ask a um, university professor who has those resources at hand, and and I have him see, well, he was the one that you know wanted to do the project in the first place, so that was easy to convince him to give me all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I remember early on in the project, I thought to myself, well, we don't have a lot of money in terms of sponsorship, but we have all these universities around the world that have like donated robots and donated um, rooms, like all this in kind support, and I don't know how much that total was in terms of money, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's so much stuff out there that you just have to, um, you know, find out how you can get access to. And it, yeah. It's kind of like resources that other people don't see sometimes, right? So in other words, they're there, but no one necessarily uses them in that way. Exactly. They use them properly, if you like, for, a, for an objective. Exactly. If I had a problem that I thought someone had the skill set for solving, I would send them an email and say, hey, I, could you give me some advice on this or could you give me some advice on that? And yeah, and people would send me emails back and say, this is my advice. Um, so 
yeah, I, I don't really have like an official mentor. I just like, I guess I have the whole world as my mentor. And you it's choose to listen to what, what might make sense at the time, well, right? Well, I, I, um, I listen to everything and then I decide what will be the best course of action for me. Because I think that whatever, um, whenever someone gives you advice, it's all based on like their experience and, um, and their situation at the time. And that might be different to your situation, your, um, your context at the time. So ultimately, you're responsible for your own decisions that you make. And so you know, you've got to weigh up everything and then choose and then be responsible for your choice. Oh, well, big problems always start from small problems. <laughs> so you've got to nip them in the bud before they become big problems. And then you have to worry about them. And, you know, I think it all usually comes down to people. Yeah. Like, that's, a, that's the hardest thing, you know? I, I remember reading when I was um, in my first year that um, more companies fail in their first year due to people problems more so than any other problem, more so than, like, lack of technical ability. It's just people problems. And I thought, well, yeah, Ruby Girls is a great experience because I'm working with people all the time, and if I can manage, if I can manage hundreds of volunteers, then like when I have employees, it's going to be a piece of cake compared to this. You know, compared <laughs> to like getting people to do stuff for free. You know, yeah. if you're paying them, um, you know, they, they've already got that commitment. Um, but then if on top of that, you know, you can inspire them, you can, um, you know, if I can bring all those skills that I use with volunteers to, to my employees, then who knows what they can create. I think that the main thing is that your expectations have to be aligned. I mean, if you're expecting this and they're expecting that, then it's not going to work. You need to both like have really clear expectations and to always communicate so that your expectations are, are, are well-founded and you're on the same page, otherwise it's not going to work. So yeah, I think communication is really, really important. And um, like I said, yeah, big problems, they all stem from little problems and, and, um, and, and mostly, yeah, it's about people. So if you're communicating with them and um, and yeah I mean then then you don't have that yeah sometimes because I guess sometimes it sounds like you've got people out of their comfort zones talking to people they didn't know they needed to talk to cold calling all those sorts of things as well as sometimes having them just do the thing they like doing rather yeah, than yeah. necessarily uh, doing anything they don't want to do yeah um, well I think um, you've got to be prepared to ask some questions um, I, for, for example, if I'm mentoring someone and I say, well, you know, oh, you know, how about we do this? So, oh, okay, so I like to have people set their own goals yeah. um, because, uh, so, yeah, if I, have, if I have an idea, I'll be like, oh, this is my idea. And I'll say, okay, so, you know, we're going to get there by then, but I want you to set your own goals. Um, and then they'll set them. And I say, oh, no, I don't think that's quite, you know, big enough or pr precise enough. You know, I, I, I think you can do better than that. And then, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, they says, so they set their own goals with my guidance, and then um, and then I can say to them, you know, you set your own goals. Like I'm just holding you to your word when I mentor you. I need to set really short-term goals um, to motivate me. Otherwise, like I, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I always um I always set like three-month goals actually, because I think that if you set like a month one one-month goal, that's too short of a time, and you can get um, demotivated and not not work towards your goal. But if you have like a three-month goal um, uh, that that inspires you, then you can work towards it. You can get demotivated, but then you know you, you remotivate yourself and you keep working towards it. And then at the end, at the end of three months, even if you don't get there, at least you're like twenty percent of the way, and you're like, wow, I can't believe I achieved like twenty percent of my like big hairy audacious goal in like three months. And oh, now I have to keep going. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I. I think, um, I, mean, I think in RoboGals, we just try to give people aut autonomy to uh, come up with their own ideas and execute them, and, and we allow people room to fail. Um, so, I mean, there was an event that I mentored someone to run, and um, it didn't go as well as we'd hoped. And, um, and, and I think she was really disappointed. Um, what I said to her after the event was, I'm really sorry. Um, I, I take responsibility for not, like, mentoring you more and, uh, throughout the whole process and, and not being there for you more um, in order for us to actually achieve our goal. But, um, you know, we learnt a lot from it and we're going to use all, all that stuff we learnt and have and make this event work the way that we want it to in, in um, four months' time. And we did. The next event we ran was so successful and so amazing. I don't think of growth linearly. 
I think that growth is like, growth is like all over the place. <laughs> um, and, and I don't know, something I like to do is just like think about what's, like every now and then just thinking about, okay, what's actually happening here? Like where are we heading? Um, what, what other opportunities, what other things have I seen in the world um, that, that could mean that um, we change the way that we get to our goal? Um, how, can I take, how can I take advantage of the opportunities that are out there? Um, and I'll just sit and think and then, and then write those things down. I'll be like, and you know, sometimes you come up with things that will help you get to your goal like five times quicker. And um, yeah, and I think, you know, when I sit and think and come up with those ideas, you know, they're more productive than like working for like a whole month, you know? So it's almost like doing, sometimes we explain in kind of commercialisation or that sort of growth phase, you're um, not doing the, the steps in order sometimes. You're sometimes doing the last step first, almost, to try and get you to where you need to go. Does that kind of make steps? We're not, we're not necessarily doing a whole list of things, it's more about what thing can I do now? Yeah. So it'll pull those other things along. Yeah, but I think it's also like believing in what you're doing um, such that you can like such it can step ten, 10 steps ahead. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it, that doesn't sound good. You don't, you don't skip them, you just like, um, I mean, you, you get them done, you need to yeah. get them done. Like, you need to get every step done, like, properly. Along the way. Right? With integrity. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, there, I mean, there are steps that you can take that, um, to set things up for the future. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, some relationships, they take a long time to develop. You need to, like, start, start those relationships earlier so that in six months' time, you already have that relationship um, that you can call on. It's so amazing that in this day and age, like if you're young, even if you're young, you can use technology and create huge impact in the world in a really short space of time. And that's what inspired me, that you could actually create tangible change in the world that like change people's lives in, in a short space of time. And, and, you know, and, I, and I just saw that the vehicle for doing that was starting a company.